Welcome to Stunning Switzerland, blockchain nation and home to the headquarters of the Cardano Foundation. As the year races to a close, I want to unwrap some crucial points about the role of the Cardano Foundation. So let's get going. Blockchains should be champions of optimal decentralization, of transparency and accountability. It is those exact characteristics that make them great public infrastructures on which to build solutions for enterprises. A blockchain record is not just immutable, it is also verifiable. What this means is that third parties can check and then even certify the authenticity of the records. It's a phenomenal game changer. Think of retail and making sure that items you buy are indeed the real deal. With blockchain, we can link physical items like pieces of clothing to an on-chain record that verifies the product's authenticity. It increases legitimacy and fights counterfeits. In other words, it verifies a promise. It is also a perfect solution to enhance traceability in supply chains. Take the food industry. We should have an easy way of knowing the quality of what we are eating. That often requires validating the product's origin as well as its path to our tables. We can register all the history on the blockchain and then use it to track and trace what happens in a secure, reliable way. Same for products as critical as pharmaceuticals and medical equipment, or for other mission critical supplies like the ones needed for the aerospace industry. But all this transparency starts with us, the people helping to build blockchains and maintaining them. We have a duty to be the first providing good, accurate information that anyone can understand. As Cardano enters the age of Voltaire, our governance phase we at the Cardano Foundation are acutely aware of this. Voltaire will call on the entire Cardano community to participate in the decision-making process. In one way or another, but the current community and the communities of the future will shape the network. This is the right way forward. People must come before code. We need to hear people and prioritize people. And we must ensure that we have access to all they need so they cannot just speak but also act from a place of knowledge. On top of that, it is fundamental that everyone has a good grasp of what the various Cardano entities do. Today, I will dive exactly into and explain where the Cardano Foundation fits within the broader Cardano ecosystem and what we can do to increase blockchain utility. We first need to start with an overview of the Cardano ecosystem itself. Now, this is a massive body of individuals, institutions, technology, and it's all come together interacting with each other. It really encompasses everything and everyone remotely associated with Cardano. It goes from actual infrastructure to the academics researching and the developers building and improving the protocol, and also from the tools and solutions both available and in production to the organizations supporting their creation and the companies applying them. It is the stake pool operators who secure the blockchain and create new blocks, but also the private citizens who delegate the stake and give stake pool operators the ability to keep interacting with the blockchain. And it is the regulations and the governmental bodies around the globe developing policies for blockchain. It is a full world with multiple aspects. To make it simpler, let's divide it into three main layers. The base layer, the solution layer, and the utility layer. The base layer represents the core technology. It includes both the layer zero and the layer one. Layer zero is the foundation, the technical components necessary to build the blockchain. In other words, it corresponds to the network stack. It combines both the hardware and the software that make the Cardano blockchain work. Layer one, on the other hand, is the Cardano blockchain itself. Not just the main chain, but the associated sidechains as well. It encompasses the public permissionless sidechains directly linked to the actual Cardano blockchain. A complete different chain that does not anchor into the Cardano blockchain, or one that operates in a private or permissioned way does not belong to the layer one. If we think of the layers in terms of who operates under which layer, stake pool operators, SPOs, fall squarely under the sphere of the base layer. They do the very creation of new blocks that then get validated and added to the main chain, meaning they are directly contributing to the Cardano blockchain itself. In fact, they keep it running. 
Now developers, and we should remember that some SPOs are also developers, move between the base layer and the next one, the solution layer. The technical community from private individuals and small businesses to big providers works from blockchain and around it, adding value to the network. What the base layer prepared, the solutions layers then complements and enriches. Be it tools or interfaces, we supplement the blockchain with technology solutions. That can mean a ledger or self-sovereign identity application. A layer two solution would also fit here. Same for a board or interface that makes it easy for all end users and enterprises to quickly interact with the data on the blockchain. Any components that ensures that the Cardano blockchain not only survives, but really thrives, belongs to this solution layer. No matter how great a base protocol is, it then needs all the other products and services that makes it work for end users. Does not matter if those are enterprises or other developers or just a private individual benefiting from the day-to-day -day operations run on the blockchain. Truth is, a blockchain only thrives when it seamlessly and efficiently integrates the various components of a solutions layer. Bring all of this together and step-by-step, step, we guarantee the Cardano blockchain not only has the durability, it actually acts as a reliable and predictable way that others can trust. It gives end users the assurance that they can rely on this technology because it will act as expected and as they need it to do. The solution layer truly is the connective tissue necessary to anchor a decentralized blockchain into the offline world. Of course, it all leads to adoption and business utility. And here we need to consider utility has more than one aspect to it. First, no widespread adoption will happen if users cannot be sure the governments and legal entities we all interact with as citizens of the world will accept blockchain as a part of the daily operations of our wonderful complex societies. For that, regulators and policymakers must have enough confidence that blockchains comply with their expectations. In reality, this starts with the specific characteristics of the blockchain's base layer. It then also depends on the infrastructure tooling in the solution layer. The value added by those products cascades and we see the consequences play out in the utility layer. The further along we are in this entire process, the more comfortable enterprises will feel in deploying blockchains for the mission critical aspects of their operations. Enterprises, however, is a very large term, and we really cannot think about companies in the same way. For now, we will divide them into three main operating models or three main groups. Radical innovators, blockchain native companies, and legacy businesses. Most of these have some sort of, let's say, commercial incentives associated with their activities, but they also have specific technology requirements. Very often, there's not yet a solution for them, or not one that fully meets their needs. This is where open source comes in. One way or another, we have to maintain the core infrastructure, the two other layers. Basically, we can go about that in two ways. We either pay people to do what we want, or we give people a seat at the table. Why? Because people know way better than us what their companies need and what their priorities lie. Open source is this exact seat at the table. It is also a fantastic way of increasing transparency and ensuring more people with different expertise come together to find extraordinary solutions to business problems and technology problems. This leads to a much better tools developed much faster and targeting specific needs we might not otherwise realize exist. It might also create tools we've not even begun to imagine. Open source taps into the talent and potential of an ecosystem. And it does so while enabling everyone across the entire utility layer to really have a voice in the direction of the infrastructure. The moment organizations start to do so, they get involved in building and contributing to features and standards and even the code itself. As a whole, they will eventually add more value to the ecosystem than the initial incentives that made them get into blockchain in the first place. So in short, open source is improved business value and utility that helps everyone 
and means we do not leave small and medium-sized enterprises behind. This is a crucial point. An ecosystem always has a multitude of different parts interacting and living together. We keep this in mind throughout everything we do at the Cardano Foundation. In fact, these layers upon layers inform our entire approach and role within the Cardano ecosystem. Put simply, the Cardano Foundation has a mandate to promote new decentralized technologies. For that, we function on the three core focus areas, operational resilience, education, and adoption. I have discussed these in detail before, but let's do a quick review. Operational resilience helps ensure the Cardano infrastructure remains robust, reliable, and durable. Education prioritizes ensuring everyone has a good understanding of blockchain, its potential, while also advocating for regulatory clarity. And adoption works to create the right conditions for increased business value and utility. Of course, all of this applies to the Cardano protocol itself. But not just that, it involves championing associated technologies and applications. That is why we support the development of infrastructure tooling. Sometimes we do so even if there is no immediate commercial use for such tooling. Let's look back at the layers. The foundation has been adding significant value to the layer zero. Our infrastructure team developed a unique mainnet monitoring solution before the information was only available locally and no one could easily or even effectively get a global view of certain parts of the network. But now, with the monitoring solution, we can collect data spread across all five continents. This gives us an extremely valuable information, which in turn raises the quality of our contributions. So far, we already fixed bugs and helped enhance the performance of fundamental components of the network stack. This wealth of knowledge also boosts the research we produce, and it actually gives the parameter committee better, more insightful data. Cardano Foundation's contribution to the layer one currently is our active delegation strategy to stake pools and the operation of our own stake pool. Further to this, but equally important, we participate in and maintain pieces of testnet infrastructure. Testnet provides a safe environment for trial and error. It lets everyone test new features or functionalities before activating them on mainnet, including businesses looking to rely on the network for the enterprise applications. In short, they offer means to avoid bugs or instability while still adding resilience down the line. In addition, the Cardano Foundation keeps running the bug bounty program, which scans Cardano assets and gets more eyes on that part of the code. We believe it's critical that adequate tooling and developer kits exist. We support this by either contributing or building such solutions ourselves. Now, not all necessary tools and solutions have an immediate commercial use. So companies might not want to spend time and money developing them, but we still absolutely need that extra value they create, which each one costs lower, agility increases, and everyone has a much easier, much smoother experience deploying blockchain in multiple situations. So the foundation helps create and promote them. Naturally, all this falls under the realm of operational resilience. Education, on the other hand, lives somewhere between the solutions and the utility layers. So we start with research. It simultaneously tests limits and expands them. It works to enrich the solution layer even further. At the same time, a good grasp on the fundamental concepts clears away misconceptions and gets people thinking about the technology. This part feeds directly into the utility layer. If policymakers have a nuanced view of blockchain, they will draft legislation that is adequate to both the present and the future of the technology, especially if they appreciate that not all blockchains are born equal. There are both significant technical and organizational differences between blockchain and infrastructure. Not just that, blockchain goes far beyond financial use cases. Understanding that is key. When companies have a better understanding of blockchain, they can imagine new possibilities and really consider how blockchain will benefit their needs and the product to market fit for them. This drives us directly into the full scope of the utility layer. And this one here is crucial. Why? 
because all the work sustaining blockchain leads to it. More than that, it must support and adapt to its growth. We want to really see the utility layer expand and become the majority of the ecosystem layers. To help it along, the foundation tackles its two biggest aspects, ecosystem maturity and adoption of the technology itself. On one hand, we champion open source as a way to include everyone and truly multiply the benefits for all. On the other, we contribute most of our efforts on small to medium-sized businesses. Let's pause here for a moment and think of all the links in a supply chain. So, we have everything that goes into a product. Then what goes into the packaging plus the suppliers of each component? We also have the people assembling the product and the ones making the preparations for the shipping and those doing the transportation. And finally comes everyone selling and buying all around the world. When we take all of this into consideration, we realize that small and medium-sized enterprises are the true backbone of the world's economy and quite probably medium ones especially. Sure, we all want the big, well-known players adopting blockchain. We realize all the wonderful ways blockchain could quickly add to the operations. We know it would bring increased traceability, reinforcing the authenticity of the products. It would even help them to report sustainability efforts in an effective manner. However, the sheer complexity of the decision-making do not really allow for a sudden change. But if a bunch of the small to medium-sized companies they work with start using blockchain, then that's a different story. Let's go back to the three main enterprise groups or operating models. Radical innovators stand for revolutionizing new approaches, something that creates a before and an after them. Throughout history, we've seen a paradigm shift happen with the industrialization, for instance, or with computers and the internet. And of course, Bitcoin took decentralized ledger technology and brought them into the center stage of the world's conversations. But we have yet to encounter other major radical innovations within blockchain. Maybe in the future. Still until then, we will not really focus on them. We will focus instead on blockchain native companies and legacy businesses. And here we need to get a bit more granular. Blockchain native companies exist because of blockchain. Their entire operations rely on the technology and quite probably only came about because of it. From their very inception, they have been part of the blockchain ecosystem. Broadly speaking, we can divide them into decentralized applications and blockchain data consumers. Decentralized applications basically use blockchain to replicate and improve on something that already exists. Games, identity, solution, marketplaces, and so on. What about blockchain data consumers? Those do not use or write to the blockchain. They read it and process the information. On a public blockchain such as Cardano, the data is already freely available. What these translator services do is look at blockchain as a database and see what types of forensic insights, of market insights, of business insights they can assimilate out of this. Then they digest and deduct information from the blockchain data footprints and that really changes a lot. Regulators and governments can lean on some of these. Auditors and analysts use them for their own work. Even for legacy businesses, it becomes beneficial. Why? Because now they know others will quickly validate their data on the blockchain. It is assurance like this that make legacy businesses more receptive to blockchain. Sure, some legacy businesses still do not particularly appreciate blockchain, and that is normal. A level of resistance to emerging technologies always happens. So to make everything easier, we consider legacy businesses and indeed the general market itself chiefly as two groups, the blockchain curious and the blockchain skeptics. For a while at the foundation, we were focused a lot on convincing the whole world to go on blockchain. But that is reality, the final outer rim of the entire utility layer. No matter how much we believe in education and keep conversations going, our resources are just too limited for us to go after people who currently dislike blockchain or do not believe in anything related to decentralized distributed architecture. So we adapted our focus. What the Cardano Foundation now does is concentrate efforts on those at least already somewhat receptive to blockchain. Maybe that means Cardano specifically or maybe not. At the very core, we have the Cardano ecosystem of today. 
These are the ones building on the Cardano using the incredible potential of our public permissionless blockchain and benefiting from it. Those who in one way or another help others to adopt Cardano. The Foundation's community team is especially active within this ring. They provide support and often engage with the current Cardano community. They clarify doubts, assess general sentiment, and crucially endeavor to understand where the community sees gaps as well as pain points. They also map resources, and not just for the immediate use of the Cardano community. This really helps our partnership team identify which tools and products already exist that can make it easier to onboard organizations to the Cardano blockchain. Here we are referring first to the blockchain curious organizations, but we also consider those already using other blockchain protocols. We specifically look to the blockchain users who might want to expand their operations to encompass Cardano within the pool of blockchain protocols they use. Blockchain user and blockchain curious organizations make up the majority of the wide cosmos of adoption for stakeholders. They are the ones occupying the daily strategy and operations of the foundation's partnership team. Of course, always supported by our Marcoms team and with the advice of the foundation's legal team as well. In fact, our legal team frequently engages with policymakers and governmental bodies advocating for clear, innovation-friendly regulation. This was a lot, so I think I will take a few extra moments to recap the main ideas. First, I want to make one thing absolutely clear. When I or the Cardano Foundation talk about the Cardano ecosystem, we really do mean the ecosystem of both today and tomorrow. This ecosystem has three key layers. The base layer, the solution layer, and the utility layer. The base layer represents the main technology the network stack plus the Cardano blockchain itself and associated sidechains. People then build upon the basis, getting creative, imagining new possibilities, seeing different needs. Developers and enterprises add technology solutions that generate value and will ultimately benefit end users. These additions give blockchain the reliability, predictability, and durability it needs to go into a wider world. That is why we call it the solution layer. This increased value lays the groundwork for an ever-growing utility layer. For this one, we need to get open source into the mix. Open source puts not just big players, but also small and medium-sized ones seated at the table. It guarantees that they all have an active voice in deciding the priorities of the infrastructure. The utility layer, of course, also fully encompasses the actual adoption of blockchain. We can divide adoption into three main types of stakeholders. First, the Cardano current ecosystem, those already using Cardano. So basically, we have a decentralized applications applying existing business models to establish blockchain companies. We also have the blockchain data consumers reading the blockchain. And on top of there are the blockchain curious organizations that do something with the Cardano blockchain and integrate that into their business processes. Right after comes the blockchain user organizations not yet on Cardano. And finally, we have the general market, which we can divide into blockchain curious and blockchain skeptic. When thinking of adoption, specifically, the Cardano Foundation keeps a focus on the current Cardano ecosystem. However, we also dab into the blockchain user organizations, not to take them away from other blockchain protocols. What we aim at here is incrementally expanding the operations to also incorporate Cardano. And more and more, we prioritize the blockchain curious segment of the general market. I will be discussing the details of our implementation plan a lot in the future. For now, I hope I help clarify what the Cardano Foundation does to promote decentralized technologies and that you found these minutes insightful. We still have a long way to go before blockchain becomes reality of everyday life, but we are getting there. To the blockchain curious watching this video, we hope you will stay around and start discovering the amazing potential of blockchain. We encourage anyone with questions and feedback to reach out to us through any of our channels. In the meantime, I bid you farewell and I see you soon.